are the kind of orders addressed to women in Jerusalem's ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods. So four female activists who had had enough decided to go to court to force a change. Artis Paul Slier met one of them. This is an area where I, I fear to go. We found that if we stand on that sidewalk by that synagogue for more than two or three minutes, we'll get, you know, 50 kids running out, spitting and screaming and throwing stones at us. Someone's teaching them uh, that this is the right way to treat women. Nilly Philip has a lot to show us, but she's afraid to leave her car. So she's driving us around the city where she lives. This is a synagogue. These signs tell women to refrain from passing on the sidewalk. And a few meters on. Right behind us, right there, is a large sign, threatening offensive sign that tells me exactly what I need to wear, that I need to come in with a long sleeved shirt, a long skirt, that I'm not allowed to wear slacks, that I can't wear anything fitted or revealing. And, and in this area, I and other women have been attacked. It got so bad that Nilly went to court and in a groundbreaking case, the judge ordered the city's municipality to take down the signs. It was a win on paper, but on the streets, the signs stay. Israel's secular law means very little for the country's ultra-Orthodox community. That's the kind of tactics that they use. They use violence, threat, they use lawlessness, they use force, they have no respect for the law. But it's not just about where women can walk and what they can wear. Israel's ultra-Orthodox minority has a pool far greater than its numbers. It dictates to the country's Jewish community who can marry and where women can pray. Here, in the heart of the old city of Jerusalem, men and women are forced to pray on different sides of the Western Wall. Anat Hoffman is a provocative and controversial figure in ultra-Orthodox circles. She campaigns for equal praying rights for women. I think that the great ultra-Orthodox empire in Israel is cracking, and it's cracking because the young women and older women in the Orthodox world are asking themselves the most, the quintessential revolutionary question, why not? Many say change is inevitable and is already on the horizon. Paul Islia RT. Jerusalem. Now, the Austrian uh, government is introducing a new initiative to control the 